Um, hi, Rachel. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. So um, we are part of the Neuro Agenda team and as part of International Women's Day celebrations and for the month of March, we will be celebrating and exploring the journeys of the talented female scientists, educators, support staff and professional service members that contribute to our world leading research centers, the Center for Developmental Neurobiology and the MRC Center for Neurodevelopmental Disorders within King's College. So Rachel, uh, I first wanted to ask you, what has been your journey to your current position? Yeah, thank you. And thanks for the invite uh, to talk about this as well. Um, so I went to, I did my undergrad at Melbourne Uni. So um, that was in biomedical science. Um, and I didn't really know that I wanted to be a researcher, I don't think, until about the third year of uh, my course. And I was able to do a research project for one of my subjects um, in a lab. And I did that with Heather Young. Uh, in the uh, anatomy department uh, and I looked at um, the, I looked at what, um, so I looked at the, uh, how the enteric nervous system uh, developed. So the enteric nervous system is in the gut. Uh, and that was really, really interesting. And I absolutely loved working with Heather and working with her lab. Um, and then at the end of my undergraduate course, um, I got the opportunity to do a honours project with Heather. Um, and honours is kind of the same as a research master's in the UK. So she, so that, um, so again, a similar sort of project, looking at the enteric nervous system um, and how it develops. Um, and then at the end of honours, I decided that I wanted to um, go somewhere else and use science as an excuse to do a bit of travel. And so I applied um, and was ultimately accepted to do a PhD with Roberto Mayol, and that was at UCL. So I moved to London at the end, at the end of my honours project. Um, and Roberto's lab works on neural crest, which is another embryonic um, cell type. And so I looked at um, how the neural crest um, moves through the embryo. So the neural crest cells all start in one place and they have to go all the way over the embryo. So I looked at how that happened. Um, and again, I really, really enjoyed it and I wanted to continue working in science. Uh, and so I took a little bit of time off after my PhD and um, went back to Australia to visit my family and did some traveling and things like that. And then um, applied to do a postdoc with John, John Clark at, at King's uh, in, an, uh, in the Centre for Developmental Neurobiology. And so that was my first postdoc, um, but it's been quite a long one. So I'm kind of getting to the end of my, of my postdoc years now. Um, okay. But working with John, I've been looking at um, spinal cord development. Brilliant. Um, so you just or, or were getting onto that, but can you tell us a little bit about um, your current role at King's um, and in the centre, what you've been doing? I guess with John. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm a postdoc um, in the centre, um, and uh, I'm looking at um, how individual neurons develop in the spinal cord, um, and we want to look embryonically. And so we use the zebrafish embryos, uh, and that they're really convenient because uh, they're transparent, and they're obviously also laid outside of the mother, so they develop outside of the mum. Uh, and so that means uh, that we can watch everything happening, kind of subcellular resolution uh, with the microscopes that we have in the centre. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. So most of my work is in research. Um, and then I also do a little bit of supervision of students in the lab and a little bit of teaching um, of undergrads outside of the lab. But yeah, the vast majority of my role is to do research. Yeah. Great. That, yeah, there seems to be some nice variety there. Um, yeah. So that leads on really nicely to another question, which is what do you like most about your current sort of um, postdoc role? Yep. Uh, yeah, well, the good thing about being a postdoc is that um, you're, I think you've got, re you've got freedom relative to being a PhD student, um, but you don't yet have all of the, um, the responsibilities of being a PI. So it's kind of a nice little, little sandwich, like in, in between role. Um, so I do really, really enjoy it. Um, I think probably the thing I like most isn't necessarily um, postdoc specific, but I just like about my job. Um, the 
kind of working in, in I'd say in a university, but probably in academia in general is just um, the people who you work with are always curious and they're, um, you know, they're always interested and you can attend seminars really on all sorts of different things, things that are really close to what you're working on. But, you know, we also have the opportunity to attend seminars, especially now that they're all virtual as well mm, um, exactly. on all different sorts of topics. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the best thing, the kind of, oh, let's just figure out who knows about this. Let's figure this out. I think I really I really like that about the atmosphere in our department. Absolutely. It's very collaborative. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and curiosity driven. Yeah. Um, so so I guess the next question is is a slightly harder one in a way. Um, yeah. But it's uh, what would you say is most challenging um, about either, you know, your journey um, to your current position or your current job? Yep. Um, yeah, I'd say I've been, um, well, very lucky in a way in that I've always um, worked with really good people and I've been quite lucky just in terms of the way that funding has worked out and things like that. Mm. I think in general, the most difficult part about our job is um that it's quite um sorry that's my dishwasher in the background <laughs> um is uh that it's quite precarious so you know that each job lasts for or each contract might last for two or three years uh and then and then you have to find another job uh and in that two or three years you need to um you know do enough work to prove yourself to be able to get the next job um so i think that's mm -hmm. probably not so much my journey, but in general, I think that's um, the most difficult thing about um, about the career. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just the, the the precariousness. Yeah, um, exactly. Some, yeah, sometimes instability. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Great. So um, because um, for Neuroagenda, we're we're celebrating uh, women in science. Um, we would really love to know what positive actions you think could be taken to increase female representation especially at more senior levels in science moving forward yep uh yeah i think as far as i understand it there are uh, quite a there's quite a reasonable number at least in um the biological sciences maybe not mm. so much in physics or something like that at least in the biological sciences it's really a, quite a reasonable um, percentage of um, women starting out in undergrad and up to phd levels and then it gradually kind of peters out. So I think you're right in that it's um, it's the senior levels that are a bit uh, trickier to address. Mm. Uh, I, I feel like the best way to address this and maybe the easiest thing that we could do would be actually to, um, uh, to uh, allow men and women more flexibility. I feel like mm. um, if, uh, two people going for a postdoc role and they and one was male and one was female and they were equally likely to take maternity leave or paternity leave for example um, then that would that would make things much easier and if everyone had that kind of expectation of work-life balance um, take time off when you're sick things like that which I think we're maybe kind of learning with COVID mm. um, I think that is uh, yeah I, I feel like that would go a long way as in um, evening evening the playing field for one of them better so i guess largely one of the key points here is to do with for example uh families and so maybe like if there was more equality yep. between caretakers yep yeah yep. and and not just you know and i've used maternity paternity leave as, as an example but you know if um people wanted to take time out to care for their parent for example mm. um i think that should just be normal mm. um uh, and I think, but I think that often falls on women to do those roles. Mm. So I think if it was, if it was more evenly um, balanced, mm. um, that e everyone was expected to, to do those roles, uh, then I think that would go some way to, um, to leveling the play playing field, yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it yeah. makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much yeah. for your input. That's okay. Um, You're very well. Great. Um, if there's no other uh, comments, I think we can wrap up. Um, no, so yeah. Thank you so much, Rachel Moore, for being part of um, this uh, Neuro Agenda uh, initiative. Uh, we're really excited to celebrate Women in Science in March. 
and uh, we're really excited to um, have you around and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for the invite. Thank you. <laughs>